What's good, YTBC? What's good, fight fans, boxing heads around the world? Be Marsh with another boxing video. So um, this particular fight I'm about to talk about is a fight that we didn't get to see. And um, this is a fight boxing heads didn't get to see. Boxing fans, fight fans around the world. And that was um, Prince Nassim Ahmed versus uh, um, Juan Manuel Marquez. You know what I'm saying? And ideally this fight, uh, we would have liked to see it or... I would have liked to have seen it in um in around like the year 2000. Yeah, the year 2000. I'd say um no later than spring, you know what I'm saying? No later than spring of 2000 and um you know, that's when I think this fight should have happened, you know what I'm saying? The man um uh what's his name? Prince Nassim was the featherweight king, you know what I mean? He was a guy who basically had all the belts at one point in time, you know what I'm saying? But he mainly mainly held the WBO belt, and that's a belt he had since um uh ninety-five, if I ain't mistaken. Yeah, ninety-five he beat um Tom Robinson, the black dude from Wales, you know what I mean? Um and uh that's how he became the WBO champ and he also had the WBC belt when he beat um Cesar Soto, you know what I'm saying? And um he had the IBF when he beat the guy Tom Johnson. You know what I mean? And uh he basically could have had the WBA belt too. You know, that's the only belt he didn't have in his possession. But he basically beat the man who held it, Wilfredo Vasquez. You know, he used to be, he was the WBA champion. And before he fought, um, um, before he fought um, Prince Nassim, Wilfredo Vasquez, um, he got stripped of the belt, you know what I'm saying? Because he didn't fight his mandatory and he went on to fight um, Prince Nassim, you know what I'm saying? So that's how Wilfredo Vasquez got stripped. So if Vasquez brought that, that strap to the table. And um, Nassim beat him. Prince Nassim would have had every single belt in the W in um in the featherweight division. You know what I'm saying? Of course, he was the lineal champ too. You know what I mean? So you know, um, like I said, this fight should have happened around ninety um, early two thousand. You know what I'm saying? The man, uh, Prince Nassim was uh his mandatory was Juan Manuel Marquez. You know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, a lot of people, they say that the man, um, Prince Nassim, was ducking um, Marquez, you know. But Marquez, at the at that time, was an un unknown commodity, you know what I'm saying? He was nobody to be ducked, you know what I mean? And truth be told, you know, uh, you know the man, Juan Manuel Marquez, you know what I'm saying? He was, um, you know, it was basically like a, a high-risk, high low reward for Prince Nassim, you know what I mean? Um, the man Prince Nassim, you know, he was definitely on a on a worldwide stage. He was an elite fighter, you know what I'm saying? And uh my Marquez was unknown at the time, you know what I mean? So you know, um and the man Mark Mar Marquez he messed his chances up of getting a fight with um with Prince Nassim in 1999, um, Marquez's first pro career loss was to Freddie Norwood, you know what I'm saying? And this was at featherweight, you know what I mean? I believe they were fighting for a belt. I want to say, um, they, um, yeah, I think they were fighting for the WBA belt that Wilfredo Vasquez had had got dro had dropped or he got stripped of, you know what I mean? So Freddie Norwood became the champion, you know what I'm saying? So that's the belt they were fighting for. And... Um, the man Prince Nassim, I'm sorry, Juan Manuel Marquez, you know, he shit the bed and he lost that fight, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, Freddie Norwood later on in his career, you know, he got a couple few losses. And, you know, he ain't never amounted to nothing like when Juan Manuel Marquez did eventually, you know what I'm saying? But um, you check it, um, the man Juan Manuel Marquez, he messed his chances up on that particular fight when he... Uh, when he lost to um to Freddie Norwood, you know what I'm saying? That would have been his shot right there. The um to get the um the fight with um with um Prince Nassim, you know what I'm saying? So um Prince Nassim he went on to fight a guy uh the the dude from South Africa, what was his name? Vuyani Bungu, you know what I mean? He went on to fight him but instead of uh Marquez, but you know, um Despite Marquez losing the fight to Freddie Norwood, 
uh, they still had negotiations in early 2000 with Marquez and um, and uh, Prince Nassim, you know what I'm saying? And Prince Nassim's team, they offered um, Marquez 400000 you know what I'm saying? I thought that was good money for Marquez at the time because, like I said, he was an unknown commodity, you know what I'm saying? You know, he was mostly fighting out there in the forum. You know, he was knocking fellas out, you know what I'm saying? But... You know, he wasn't really fighting guys who were known. This fight with Mark, um, with, um, with what's his name, with um, Prince Nassim would have definitely put him on the map, you know what I mean? But he got offered that 400K and he declined it. He refused to fight. He basically said, you know, he needs more time. Basically, he wants to fight other guys in order to prepare to get ready for Prince Nassim. So what's Prince Nassim to do? You check it. You can't say that, that, um, that he ducked, that Prince Nassim was ducking, um, uh, Marquez, you know what I'm saying? Because he made an offer to the man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, what would have happened in this fight? Basically, you know, the key to victory for both guys. Um, Mar Marquez, at that particular time, he wasn't um, a devastating um, uh, boxer punch as he did, as he was, as he grew up in his... He came up in weight, you know what I'm saying? As you can see in this fight when he fought Casamayor, you know what I'm saying? He put hands on Casamayor, you know what I mean? He really hurt the man and dropped him a couple times, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, you know the fights with um, Manny Pacquiao, you know what I'm saying? You know, the man, um, Marquez, his weight, his uh, his power increased as he, as he went up in weight, to be honest. Because at featherweight, he wasn't a devastating puncher as he was... Um, you know what I'm saying, in, in his higher weights, you know what I'm saying, like a lightweight, like when he fought guys like, um, uh, what's his name, um, uh, Baby Bull, Juan Diaz, you know what I'm saying, you check it, or Cat Cities or these guys, you know what I mean, so, you know, I think um, Prince Nassim had more devastating power if they met in 2000, you know what I'm saying, Prince Nassim had power in both hands, you know, he's a guy who was a natural southpaw, but he had an orthodox you know, an orthodox fighting style, you know what I'm saying? Where he could um basically switch be a switch hitter and switch stances and he could um throw lead uppercuts, you know what I'm saying, with either hand, you know what I'm saying? But his left uppercut was devastating. You know what I'm saying? He'd throw lead right hands or lead left hands depending on which stance he's in at the moment. You know, and I think all that would confuse the man, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, you know what I'm saying? So as far as power, I would give the edge to Nassim at that particular time, you know? Um, as far as defense, um, um, I would probably say the man, um, what's his name, Marquez had a tighter defense because his offense was predicated to what he did on defense, you know? Marquez was is one of the best counter punchers of his era, and... Um, I think that uh, his um, his defense would be a little tighter more than it was, you know, in um, as he got older, you know what I'm saying? His defense, um, as he got older, you know, he'd be more of a crowd pleaser who was willing to trade, you know what I'm saying? You check it. So I think that um, Juan Manuel Marquez would, um, would have definitely have the better defense, you know what I'm saying? But like I said, he wouldn't have the the power, punching power, to knock out Prince Nassim. In my opinion, he might drop Prince Nassim. I could see him dropping Prince Nassim because Prince Nassim's balance was terrible, man. You know, because of the way he would just be, you know, be dancing in the ring and just be, you know, his unorthodox style sometimes would leave him off balance. And basically, that's what happened when he fought um, uh, Mark Antonio Barrera. You know what I'm saying? You know, when he was getting caught with those punches is, you know, when he was leaning back, you know, trying to use his reflexes, you know, the man was um, off balance. And that's why those punches look like they were, you know, lifting him, lifting him off of his feet. You know what I mean? All right. So um, um, as far as um, footwork, I would say the man Marquez was um, Marquez. Um, he probably had better footwork, you know what I'm saying, because, you know, he was more of a, a fundamentally sound fighter, you know what I'm saying, and um, he would be in there, you know, uh, you know, he'd be trying to catch the man, um, as, um, what's his name, Prince Nassim, you know what I'm saying, but Prince Nassim would be a little too, too fast for him, you know, 
But um, as far as footwork, as staying in the pocket and staying on balance, um, the man Marquez, I think he would definitely be um, he would de definitely have his stance more, be un unlike um, Prince Nassim, because Prince Nassim was a guy who um, you know, he would be fighting in different stances, and you know, you know, he'd be moving his hips in different ways. You know what I'm saying? So. I think that would leave Prince Nassim more vulnerable, even though he had the better footwork laterally, you know, moving side to side, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I just think the man Prince Nassim at that particular time was just a better fighter than um, than Marquez, you know what I'm saying? Marquez, you know, eventually had a better career because he fought much better competition, you know what I'm saying, and had a longer career, fought into his 40s while Prince Nassim retired early as a young man, you know what I'm saying? But I think um, Prince Nassim, I think his power would be too much and the hand speed too, you know? I think he had definitely the faster hands than um, than uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, you know? Ma Marquez got dropped um, a few times by, what's his name? Um, he got dropped by, by, what's his name, at Featherweight. Um, by Manny Pacquiao three times in the first round, you know what I'm saying? So I think the man, um, Prince Nassim, would be able to do the same, you know what I mean? And uh, it's a damn shame we ain't get to see that fight, man. It, we should have had, this is a fight we should have seen, you know what I mean? Um, the man, um, um, Prince Nassim, I think his hand speed and um, basically I think he'd, be, he'd frustrate the man, um, uh, Marquez, you know what I'm saying, because of his, uh, you know, he would be an unpredictable guy, you know what I'm saying, he would be catching him from different angles, you know what I'm saying, um, Marquez would be trying to be a patient counterpuncher, you know what I mean, and like I said, he could tap the man Hasim on the jaw, and he might drop him, but I don't think he would hurt him, but he would drop him basically because um, the man's uh, balance, you know what I'm saying, his balance was terrible in my opinion, Prince Nassim, you know what I mean, so, yeah, let me know what you guys think about this fight happening in early 2000, you know what I'm saying? And um, like I said, Prince Nassim was, his mandatory for a minute, for a while was um, uh, uh, Marquez, but Marquez lost the fight and ruined his chances of getting the fight with um, when he lost to Freddie Norwood. So let me know what you guys think about this fight happening back when, and um, let me know who you think uh, would win this fight in the comments section. Leave your thoughts and comments, and um, if you like the video, hit that thumbs up. It's B Marsh Boxing, and uh, thanks for listening. Peace.